G'day everyone, Paradox just dropped a new dev diary, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at that. It's adding a pretty big change to the game in terms of how your industrial designers and everything work. I think it's going to add a lot of complexity and extra flavor and give you a bit more chance of creativity. I understand some of you may not like that, but we'll just have to wait and see till it comes out uh, and see what we think. But let's have a look through the dev diary now. So what we're looking at today is military industrial organizations, which from my understanding is basically going to be enhancing the designers, uh, like the equipment designers and everything. So that's like your tank designer, air, navy, uh, in like equipment and industrial designers and everything. They say here like their intent is to provide some sort of like interaction that's beyond just saving up your political power and hiring the designer, which I think is cool. So as I say here, they want to allow players to define their direction and basically tailor it to their specific play style. From the look of this, you're going to be able to add bonuses specific to things that you're going to want to use in the game, which is good. It goes like another level beyond just hiring like the relevant designer. And sometimes you know, for a country, there's not even a particular designer that supports the playthrough that you want to do. So how's this going to work in game? I'm not going to lie. I, I'm not sure I 100% comprehend it, but I think that might just be because my smooth brain can't compute it. By the sounds of this, you'll be able to create them kind of like a spy agency. Hopefully you can give them custom names. That would be cool. In each military industrial organization, there's going to be a design team, three departments and 13 traits in each design team or 13 traits in each department and then an industrial manufacturer so it's like i'm not sure if there's like a design team for each different like for like land navy air equipment or if that's like one that overarches the whole lot of them i'm not 100 percent sure the departments have different categories and they have their own like trait trees and everything. So kind of like doctrines, you could think about that in where like you'll pick your designer and then as you're like looking for what upgrades to give them, it's kind of like you choose like doctrine paths, like with your land and air and naval doctrines. So basically they're used for like research, production and designing of equipment, which they've got some cool examples of how that works. We'll show you a little bit down further. So by default, there's a two task capacity. Again, I'm, I I don't understand. I don't fully understand this yet. So basically they're saying this allows us, that allows them to create MIOs in a way that expresses the specializations of various organizations as they did during the war. So like the example they use is Bofors that used, like they made anti-tank guns, AA guns, naval guns, and you know, that's sort of what they're wanting their designers to do. So that leads me to believe that maybe there is just one like a uh, MIO that you make for the whole lot? I don't know, we'll have to wait and see. And then an MIO can't work on an infinite number of simultaneous projects. There's a task capacity. I believe that's where you can assign them like a research or a production or something like that. This is an important thing to balance since producing too much equipment with an MIO will lock you out from using it for research or designing equipment. So I think basically you can assign it to like, yeah, two out of those three tasks and get the benefits from it like that. So they say here as well, for ship production, this is actually important for producing ships in parallel. So you might want to invest in the manufacturing department for task capacity so you can ramp up your naval production. Again, I guess we'll have to wait and see exactly how this works, but let's read on. In terms of the cost, it looks like initially it's going to have a 150 political power cost to set it up as usual. And then from there, you need MIO funds to like do upgrades and changes and everything. So it says the research cost and production cost is used to calculate what funds you get. So I'm assuming once you create it, when you assign your MIO to like boosting your research or to, you know, upgrading a particular type of equipment that you're producing, I'm assuming then that kind of is how you gain that, I guess, XP. If you think about it like army XP, you gain that from your soldiers fighting or whatever. Makes sense that like you gain this, like these funds or this MIO XP as your organization is in use, right? That makes sense. And here's what I was talking about. So they have the skill trees. They say it's split roughly along the same lines as the current design companies. So you've got like your, your, air, like your artillery, air force, tank, uh, and then like your industrial one as well. And yeah, it's kind of like doctrines where I guess you choose a, spe a specialization path to go down which these are obviously, you pick one of three, they're exclusive, and then you can research like upgrades to it later on. Uh, and then, yeah, of course we don't know what those bonuses are gonna be. Again, we'll just have to wait and see. I think it's safe to assume there'll be stuff like soft attack and hard attack, like 
increasing anti-defense, um, yeah, things like that. So, uh, yeah, you know, if you're going for like an infantry heavy artillery build, then you can just make the biggest, juiciest cannons you've <laughs> the world has ever seen. I don't know. And yeah, so you need to spend those trait points that you build, upgrade, or that you re that you gain to upgrade your MIO. The devs did say as well that it's like pretty easy to set all this up early game and then you just get the little notifications to pop up whenever you have uh like an available perk that you can upgrade like the same as your doctrines like when you've got a doctrine to upgrade you get the pop-up you can go and do that so it shouldn't be like a whole bunch of micro going forward they've said that they don't want to do that um which i think is like probably i know with my community a lot of you guys might be newer to the game i know that i know some of you find like the designers to be a bit frustrating um so yeah this is kind of like their auto design button i guess they're just making it easy to do at the start and then yeah minimal effort going forward i guess with the industrial manufacturer, it looks like they'll be assigned to your production lines and bonuses to like production. And then your design teams will be applied to like actual types of equipment. Uh, I think they're basically saying here for like when you research type of equipment, right? When you research the type of equipment that will be applied to like any variants of that going forward, I believe. Um, like if we have a look here at like the plane designer, you can see it kind of takes the place of, you know, what your traditional plane designer would have been. Yeah, what you yeah, so when you research a hull chassis or frame, you specify an MIO to research it with, and that will be the default MIO that's selected when you open up the designer. And then basically those bonuses will be applied going forward, I believe. And then you can change this for a cost and assign the MIO after you've researched it. So, you know, if you want to like upgrade equipment and stuff, I don't know if that will cost you like the research tokens or what they were, whatever they were called or whether that's going to cost you political power. Um, yeah, we'll find out. And then it looks like that that will be applied sort of automatically to equipment that doesn't have a designer. So like your infantry equipment, artillery and stuff like that. Um, so it says you can add or change it from the vanilla create variant UI. So yeah, I guess if you don't do it, like if, you, if it's not applied when you research the tech, you can retroactively apply it is what I think they're saying there. And then here you can see as well, you can actually upgrade it as well. Like it sort of shows like an outdated design. If you're like, I think if you add more perks to your designer, uh, to your MIO, then you'll need to update that same as you would any other variant. And then this is where I believe the industrial MIO is like applied to production line. So you, you can set it like this. I'm going to be honest, I don't fully understand if this will be like you can apply it to an unlimited amount of production lines or just certain production lines. And if it's just certain, I don't know why it wouldn't automatically apply. Like, I, I don't know why it wouldn't automatically apply to all the relevant ones because you wouldn't necessarily want to be creating equipment without that bonus, right? So um, unless it adds a production cost, an extra production cost potentially. So, which I don't believe it does. I didn't see anything on that. I could have missed it. Also, how cool are these little like work in progress things they give us in the dev diaries? I love this like little insight. I love the little insight into like what they, what their process is, you know? So yeah, in any case, that's a, that's our first look, I guess, at what the MIOs are going to be. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, if you think this is just going to add extra complexity to the game and you don't really want a bar of it. Let me know if you think Paradox should add an auto design button for this, if you don't want to have to deal with it or an option to turn it off. Um, yeah, let me know if you think it's going to be interesting. I, I think this is going to be a pot. Obviously, we need more info, of course, but I think it's going to be a positive change. Like, I, I'm a big fan of anything that gives me a bit more control and creativity in the game. So, yeah, I'm actually like really looking forward to this one. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Uh, let me know in the comments. And thanks for watching. And like and subscribe. And I'll. You know, if you subscribe, the MIOs will be automatically added to your Steam account and you can play it before anyone else. That's not true. Thanks, guys.